now moving on to our second panel discussion of the day on empowering global rail solutions from make in India to make for the world. We're going to discuss about expanding global footprints through strategic partnerships, innovation and manufacturing techniques, supporting infrastructure for export-led growth. We have an illustrious uh, range of people who are going to join us on stage as our panelist and as our moderator. Uh, can I request Mr. Rajiv, Managing Director Services and Commercial Director Alstom to please join us on stage. Mr. Rajiv Joy, sir. I know we're coming towards the end of the day, but it's still not the end of the day. Can I request all of you to please put your hands together for our panelists? <laughs> Moving on, can I request Mr. Pritish Chaudhary, Director of Marketing and Business Development at Titagar, to please join us on stage. Thank you, sir, for taking the time out of joining us here and being our panelist. Sri Mangal Dev, head of, head of Hitachi Railway Systems Business, Hitachi India. Can I request you to please join us on stage? I think we are good to remove one. Mr. Nishung Garg, Vande Bharat Director, Kinet Railway Solutions Limited. Is he here with us? All right, thank you, sir. Mr. Manav Gulati. Assistant General Manager, Tata Blue Scope Steel. Can I request you to please join us? Mr. Ankur Dev, Chief Officer, Escorts Kubota Limited. And to moderate this esteemed list of panelists up here on stage, and of course, our panel. Can I request Managing Director, Norbrem Sain, they are private limited, Mr. Dipankar Ghosh, to do the honors. And uh, I would also request Mr. Narendra to please join us on stage to present uh, all of them with the bouquet and welcome all our panelists and our moderator. Can you please get the bouquets? The man behind this vision, getting all the people on board, those sleepless nights, Thank you so much sir, for joining us here. Once again, welcoming all our panelists, our moderator. So in the interest of time, we've kept 45 minutes for the panel discussion. So once this yeah. is done, the stage is all yours. Yeah, we have already lost a lot of time. So uh, let's come yes. back to the time. Just yeah. moments, sir. Just like few seconds here. I think that that sir is left. Thank you. Over to you, sir. So, uh, first and foremost, uh, we have a little bit of a less time, but I think we will be given at least the 45 minutes which we were planned to. So, we have a very august panel, starting from Rajiv Joyser, who is the uh, MD for. Uh, services uh, in Alstom, then you have Pritish, uh, one of the young tech entrepreneurs from the wagon industry of uh, India. I mean, obviously, son of the illustrious father, uh, Mr. Uh, Umesh Chaudhary. Uh, and then you have, uh, I suppose, uh, Mr. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, Kishung, uh, Nishunk Garg, uh, again, from a very interesting uh, tie up, uh, which is the Kinet. Uh, why interesting? Because you have the first, uh, the t trash mass holding coming to India, collaborating with an Indian uh, um, company, RVNL, and trying to supply for the Indian market, which is an entirely different perspective what you have. And then you have uh, the Mr. Gulati from Data Blue Scope, 
who we heard few minutes ago so many other things what they are doing for with Tata Steel for the metros and then we have a CEO for an Indian uh, company who is trying to um, help in a lot of local uh, produced products for the railways. So with this we have a very, uh, I think a heady cocktail of a lot of different different experiences in this particular panel. So we will be going through, I have a lot of questions for them but in the interest of time maybe I will not be able to ask everything to everyone but I will try to see how we can still manage the time and then open up the floor to many of you because uh, to share their practices, to, sh to have some constructive questions from many of you for this elite panel what we have. So maybe we start with Rajiv. I mean, we all know that uh, Alstom has been doing a lot of things in India, be the Madhepura double locomotive uh, project. Similarly, a lot of locomotive engineering, they have shifted a lot of engineering from the European base to India. So let us hear from you, uh, your uh, overall make in India and make for global strategies what you have for Alstom. Uh, thanks, Dipakar. So, as you said, uh, Alstom has been uh, doing a lot of work in India, but not only for India, but uh, also for global uh, world. Uh, it's very encouraging that today government is, uh, you know, having the ambition to do more out of India because we have all the fundamentals today. When I say fundamentals, fundamentals in terms of manufacturing, fundamentals in terms of sourcing and engineering value add. And this is what we have been doing uh, in Alstom. Uh, so to give an example, uh, you know, today we have uh, factories, uh, precisely six factories, manufacturing facilities, five engineering centers. Uh, out of this uh, six factories, uh, we, we manufacture components in two of our factories, uh, namely in Coimbatore and Maneja. Uh, we are today delivering almost 50% of our capacities uh, to outside, all, you know, outside India uh, globally. Uh, around 12 plus projects, uh, 44, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, different uh, sites. Uh, so we do a lot of work in the compo. Uh, we have been delivering also trains. Uh, so our examples have been Sydney, uh, where both Southwest and Northwest, we have been uh, able to deliver close to 270 cars. Uh, and not only deliver trains, but we have been also maintaining them. Uh, but they have been delivered out of India. We have delivered 450 cars out of our Sauli factory, uh, the new generation Queensland uh, commuter trains. Uh, so overall, if you see from a manufacturing standpoint, uh, we, we do a lot of work. And thanks to the sourcing base that we have here, that we are able to bring a lot of value add, a lot of competitiveness uh, to our products, uh, which makes us a lot of, uh, you know, attractive in the, in the globally. Uh, but not only manufacturing, I would say, we, we also do a lot of engineering uh, outsourcing. And when I say engineering outsourcing, it's a real value add that we do. Uh, so to give again an example, uh, around 35 to 40 percent of our engineering work in India, uh, which comes uh, from the five centers I just talked about, uh, we do out of India. And this uh, nearly translates into, I would say, six to seven million uh, hours of engineering work, which is uh, quite a lot. Uh, we used to do a lot of work package model earlier, which was, you know, uh, you know to start the show. Uh, now we have started more taking more an ownership uh, approach. Uh, so we lead the projects uh, out of India. Uh, when I talk about signaling, uh, we today as we speak, we have a big uh, engineering uh, development uh, base out of Bangalore. Uh, we cater to almost 120 projects uh, across the world, which is quite a lot. So in every project uh, around the world where Alstom has, uh, let, let us say, doing the, the signaling project, uh, India is involved in that. So that's the kind of work which we have been doing. Uh, we have been obviously creating jobs, direct, indirect. Uh, we have been contributing to the economy. Overall, I would say uh, we believe India is very well equipped today uh, to address, uh, let us say, as a leading uh, rail exporter for the world. And we have uh, both technology as well as manufacturing capacity to address that. So in a nutshell, yes, uh, I would I strongly believe uh, in our ambition to, let us say, being an export hub uh, for the world. Yeah, I mean, just to add, since we are one, I mean, Alstom is one of our uh, largest customers globally, so we do also know something about Alstom, both globally and India. Uh, you would be surprised that Alstom is moving their whole of the locomotive engineering worldwide to India, because India is one hand becoming the largest global market uh, for locomotives. I mean, uh, many of you who don't know, I mean, what we see 
some of the European or rather the uh, the US market for locomotive is has been coming down from an OE sense only one or two per year while today India will be doing something in the range of 1300 to 1400 plus locomotives per year so that's the amount of traction you have and that's why I suppose uh, uh, Rajiv representing Alstom they're shifting their whole of the locomotive engineering to India that's a huge uh, I think uptick for the whole of the Indian uh, supplier ecosystem what you have out here with that let me let me pass on to Pritish I will come back to you Rajiv so Pritish I mean again uh, uh, Titagar is in the news for many things I mean you are into shipbuilding you are into trains now you have the uh, the metro the Surat, Surat metro the Pune metro and you had the acquisition for the firma a uh, lot of things I mean you are a, one of the happening companies Indian companies of the uh, railway industry so tell us what are your plans what how do you feel from the make in India to a make for global or even for the India market and also maybe you should mention about the 80 train sets which you have won for the with the BHL conglomerate yeah sure so thank you very much Mr. Ghosh for that very illustrious uh, introduction uh, so at Titagard you know currently we're India's largest manufacturer of freight wagons uh, in the month of March in fact we produced almost 1,090 wagons, which is the industry's highest ever recorded production. And on that front, we expect to have a stable production now going forward at a run rate of about 1,000 wagons a month. So 12,000 wagons a year. Now I'll come to the more uh, happening side, as you said, which is the passenger rail division. Now there, we definitely see a lot of potential for growth. As uh, Rajiv Ji just mentioned, the ecosystem in India is strong and it's getting stronger by the day, by the week, by the year. And as far as we are concerned, uh, between us and our associate company in Italy, which is uh, Titagar Firema, we currently operate about five design centers, so two in Italy and three in India. In fact, we've just opened up a new design center in Bangalore uh, to cater to both the Indian and the European market as well. Uh, you'll be very happy to know that uh, in this Make in India, Make for the World initiative, we'll very soon be exporting the very first made in India converter that will be fitted in Rome Metro in Italy. So the export of that is due in the next month and uh, it will be the very first time that a high tech product such as a converter is being fully made in India to be exported to be installed in an Italian Metro. So uh, this is a very small representation of our vision and our goals as far as making in India and making for the world is concerned. Of course, with that said, I would like to highlight that the Indian market today is so robust and the opportunities are so large that uh, an Indian company need not necessarily look out of the country for growth. But uh, we are constantly looking at opportunities abroad in Asia, in Europe, in, in the Middle East, in Africa uh, to really give us our next leg of growth maybe three, four years down the line. Thank you. I mean, maybe you should also mention that the CRRC project which you have taken over many of people you don't know because the fact of the CRRC could not deliver the Bangalore Metro it is now being manufactured by T at Titagar, right? Absolutely. So uh, with that project we're now setting up uh, we have set up in fact our stainless steel Metro car body line which is a completely robotic uh, manufacturing line for the stainless steel car bodies. So with small improvements like these on technology, on process, on manufacturing, we aim to become more and more efficient so that we are able to cater to not just India, but to the world much more efficiently going down the yeah. line. Thank you. I, I'll just have the next question with Nish Nikunj Gaj, Gaj, sorry, I, uh, Nishunk Gaj, sorry for that. Uh, and then move on to uh, open up the floor for some questions because all these three gentlemen are of the same league where they are almost making not only for India but also in a way for some of the global uh, components also. Back to you Mr. Gag. So yeah. basically uh, what we would like to know from you is how Kinet uh, with this particular sort of a setup what you have, how do you plan to manufacture in India, develop maybe, I don't know whether you develop the Indian supplier ecosystem and also cater to the uh, 35 year old uh, maintenance contracts which is inbuilt into this particular 120 train sets which you have been awarded, right? Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the lovely question. Uh, I would just like to say that um, Kinet Railway Solutions is a company who is fully embraces with the initiative of Make in India. Uh, the way we are establishing our operations in India, uh, we are going to utilize the Indian ecosystem, the way my colleagues uh, said, uh, to make and design in India. 
I would just say uh, on a simple terms, we are going to uh, develop in India, we are going to manufacture in India, we are going to maintain India and we believe that we are going to grow in India for sure. If I'll say in, in totality, uh, the way we are having and adopting a different and unique model of supply chain and the procurement is going to make us different the way our competitors are doing. And that is how is going to help us to, uh, to be associated with the Make in India concept the way we have been doing. And the way we are going to manufacture in India, it will roll out in such a way that everything would be done in India. As my colleague said, the Indian ecosystem is developing like anything. And we have all sort of uh, players who can uh, deliver the need of the uh, project which is needed. So that's all. Okay. So maybe just let me open the floor for a few questions before we move on to the other two panelists. Between the two gentlemen, uh, Pritish and Mr. Garg, you have the 200 train sets of Bande Bharat with them. <laughs> right? So, uh, anyone from the, uh, the audience, if you have a question, please, sir. Question for Mr. Choudhury. I think you got the order about a year ago for the Vande Bharat train sets. You, can put your you got the order about a year ago for Vande Bharat train sets. When do you hope to be able to produce the first prototype coach? Thank you very much, sir. So currently we're in the designing phase and the first proto is due to be uh, delivered in June 2025. So June next year. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chandrakan Jadav. I am from a company called Arm Builders. Arm Builders. We, are, we are into robotic solution provider for the rolling stock. Since 19, 2016, 2016, we have been supplying the robotic solution to uh, TI metal forming, I mean all uh, TI, uh, TI metal forming, Pendar Industries, then Universal, all ICF, BMCF, RCF uh, vendors. So I, my question is actually, though we are having a profound uh, uh, technology, but uh, for these one day of our trains, we have not been actually got any kind of uh, support from the Make in India, uh, uh, this thing, Make in India uh, platform. From, uh, I suppose. I, I, yeah, I, I'd like to uh, have the question to Mr. Uh, Nishung, whether you are going to manufacture the rolling stock in India and would like to choose the partner from the India for okay. the rolling stock manufacturing. Okay. So, as many of you must be aware of that the, uh, the coaches of this project what we have is going to be manufactured in India, for sure. The factory which is based out in Latur, which is in Maharashtra, uh, interiors of Maharashtra I would say, it would be 100% indigenized manufacturing which we are going to get it there. Uh, obviously, there is a different supply chain which is going to be there with the car body shell and all. I will just take your point, uh, sir, what you just said. About the robotic arms, uh, so even the, the arms of robotic is also going to be used to manufacture the car body shells. So that sort of facility is also there and uh, I'm just giving you a perspective, I'm just choosing the word and picking it up. But just to answer your question, yes, uh, it is going to be manufactured completely in India. Please. Please. recently supplied the Sorry. total automated robotic solution for the BML for manufacturing of Vandeya Bharat uh, sidewall, car line and underframe. Okay. And with okay. all uh, I say BMC vendors, they are taking from us. So, okay. so, I would like to have the generate the enquiries from these all panels who are actually <laughs> having this. <laughs> the, so, sorry. The Fair. enquiries will not be generated in this panel now. <laughs> so, rest assured, obviously, we will be talking about it. Sir. Uh, so, I, I was associated with the Vande Bharat when we saw the first rollout and uh, you know typically when you have the rollout of trains, you have the rollout of automotive vehicles, you have the rollout, you know. The general this thing, one year or two years before the rollout, you start seeing the pictures of what are the shape of the things to come. How will be the interiors, what will be the comfort, what will be the sensorization, what will be the improvements. Unfortunately, as far as Vande Bharat is concerned, Except for seeing the exterior, we are seeing almost nothing. And as far as the specifications also are concerned, I can say that we've got hundreds of pages of the propulsion system and everything, 
but almost nothing about the interiors. So I hope that uh, you will be able to share with us even before the prototype, maybe in the next month or two, how you're going to make these trains different, how you're going to make the interiors different, how you're going to make the sensorization different. Can we see some pictures? Like today when you go to buy a car, we don't see its propulsion system. We look at its interiors, we look at its comforts. So we would like to see from you as being international manufacturers, you know, and an aspirational India, make in India, a new generation of trains, and of course much superior to what we already have. Are you going to come out in a month or two with interiors and can we see the specifications and we can see what you have in mind and how it compares with the world? I can just conclude in a simple way. Uh, for sure you will be going to have the pictures in another two months. The way we are progressing in the mock-up and the way we are progressing in the project, you will be able to see the interiors as well, for sure. Okay. So, sir, your point is very well taken. I mean, for the end user, what matters is how comfortable the train is and what the interiors look like. And uh, I'm sure uh, for, it's the shame, same for Mr. Garg, but uh, we are keeping fully in mind the, cust the passenger comfort and the interiors when we're designing the train. And we're hopeful that when the designs do come out, this uh, concern of yours would be addressed, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good evening. I am Gaurav Agarwal from Webtech. So I have a question for Mr. Rajiv Joyce. Can you hold the mic closer yeah, to yeah. your mouth? So yeah. I am Gaurav Agarwal from Webtech. So I have a question for Mr. Rajiv Joyce. In the past, uh, Alstom did a lot of effort and was on the verge of winning the aluminium train sets. So in the morning also we were discussing the pros and cons of aluminium versus steel. So my question is that do you think such type of tenders will come in the near future? If yes, then what are the plans of Alstom as already uh, some steps been taken to develop the ecosystem to be competitive. I think he was mentioning, I'll make it short, uh, uh, Gaurav's question is that, uh, I mean, the, again, the discussion between stainless steel and aluminium uh, coaches and the pros and cons about, right? Yes. If I summarize it, yeah, yes. please. So do you think is, uh, this opportunity You have to hold the mic again? properly. We are oh, not able to hear sorry, you from sir. here. Yeah, do you okay. think that this opportunity of aluminium train sets will come in the near future? And if yes, uh, are you prepared to, uh, means if some ecosystem is developed so that you are competitive and may win again, yeah. No, thanks, thanks for the question, uh, Garo. Uh, see, I believe uh, both SS and aluminum has their advantages and you know, uh, pros and cons, I would say. Uh, as you go high in the speed, obviously you need lighter trains uh, and lighter trains for reasons so that you know, you do not uh, bring the aggressivity on the track uh, and therefore, uh, globally, if you see, most of the high-speed trains are in aluminum. Uh, so today we are 160 uh, kmph trains, uh, you know, uh, applying in uh, country and SS is okay for that. But as we move 200, 200 plus, uh, aluminum will become a necessity. Uh, and we believe uh, today or tomorrow, I think we will need that. So India as an ecosystem uh, will need that uh, to go for, you know, let us a high-speed train and therefore aluminum will be needed. But most importantly, I think if India can also establish itself uh, as an aluminum train manufacturer for the export purpose, because today if you see 50% of the aluminum trains or let us say the, the extrusions are coming from China, uh, there's a huge demand globally. Uh, we can tap that market uh, if we create that ecosystem. Uh, and therefore, we will be still keen, uh, we'll be we will like to continue, let us say, our contribution if, uh, let us say, the opportunity comes. And we believe with our uh, setup and the base that we have, uh, we can, let us say, contribute significantly in developing such an ecosystem. So, the so answer is yes. I mean, just to add, I mean, Alstom as a global player has both the stainless steel and uh, aluminium options. It's only the question of what the market price it obviously is available in the market. If I can also just come in here very yeah, quickly. So I think you made a very important point that currently there are no extrusions that are available yes. in India. So, uh, you know, we made the Pune Metro, which is uh, the only aluminium bodied metro coach True. in India actually. And one of the biggest problems that we faced was the availability of 23 meter long single length extrusions. You know, in our case, uh, not from China, but we also had to import them from Europe. So as long as uh, manufacturers like us need to import these extrusions, we will never be cost competitive. Yeah, please. I mean, unless the supplier ecosystem develops, it's a chicken and egg issue. 
but obviously the other point is that unless there is a very much incremental uh, benefits for an aluminium coach, uh, you really don't see that benefit. Yeah, I mean the cost difference versus the the benefits. But nevertheless, uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar. Yeah, uh, one quick question to Kainat uh, Nishank. Like uh, you all are making great strides with respect to the mechanical part, the furnishings and everything, and of course the the bogey and the shell basic design per se has been provided by Indian Railways uh, with respect to the electrics. How far have you moved? And I'm sure you must have done. Uh, like, uh, what is the what are the contours for your electrics? Okay. So. Thanks a lot, sir. Um, I would say this, uh, as we have just signed the contract just few months back, so this is under preparation. Uh, electric is, yes, uh, uh, you rightly said, it's an integral part of the train coaches. If that does not define properly, the train coaches cannot run properly. So absolutely right, but it is under design and it will be done in, I would say, coming months. But yes, uh, the, the faults what we have already observed during the previous trains, we have set up a a mechanism which can be reviewed so that those issues can be taken care of. So at least that part we are taking care of. And the final result to come out, it will take some time. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So let me move on to uh, Mr. Malhotra for the blue startup blue scope. We recently, we had your presentation. So we had seen your presentation, how you have been contributing to the different uh, metros and all the stuff. Is there anything more? from the government, from the metro authorities or from this platform, you would like to give us a message to the stakeholders out here that what will help Tata Blue Scope uh, to really get into this market, do more for the country? Sure. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, for the same. But to come on the topic from make in India uh, to make for the world. But the first thing what we see in our Indian economy, the big transformation which is happening right now, the demand for inside the Indian market is so huge, so huge, that that's one of the first step for us to first feed this Indian market and then move to the next step of make for the world. Very soon we'll also see that. Basis that we are also in a process to increase like way back 2018, we acquired two big companies, put our production capacity from two and a half lakh million tons, metric tons to six lakh metric tons. So we are in a huge, I would say, transformation process as a company to increase our capacity and then increase. We as a company are into big infrastructure projects like airports, like metros and all. Our big vision is to see, you remember way back 15, 20 years back when we used to go outside, we see the world-class airports. Slowly and steadily, we see all Indian airports are as equivalent to what we see in the world-class airport. The next step came the metro stations. You practically do not see any metro station difference in our country or you go to Dubai or in Europe and, and all. They are better. Yeah, so I would say our infrastructure is next to step towards it because it's comparatively a new infrastructure. Similar, similarly, for the Indian railways, we see a lot of transformation which is happening. So as an industry, we also demand that our railway stations, which are a very hybrid models, mixed use, multiplex and all, to be that world class so that when our kids go to outside US and all, they should be proud to say that our railway stations are as good as the European railway stations. So that's what vision we have as a company with where our kids can proudly say that these are our True. stations. Yeah. I mean, as any company, what we see, if you see some of the Chinese big companies or the European big companies, everyone succeeded in their home market first. They actually perfected their home market and then actually came out to the outside world to become multinational companies. The, the reality is that. So with that said, I mean, let me come back to uh, my uh, other, uh, my old company, if I may say, I still have a lot of love for escorts. So um, uh, from the escorts, uh, so-called customer, pro uh, the so-called uh, product profile or something, how do you feel that you, from a Make in India perspective, you are Make in India, but I suppose we should more ask you about the export things, what you do for China, for many other things. I mean, uh, it would be, uh, many of the audience may not know, Escorts is one of the companies who are actually doing export for China from India, which is pretty rare. I mean, uh, so uh, maybe you should share something, uh, what you are doing for the export market and how you are developing it for uh, the Make in India sort of also. Sure, thank you. So, uh, if I talk about export, so we have developed a lot of uh, safe and reliable products for our export markets and uh, I think I have mentioned in my presentation also. As of now, we are exporting our products to more than 15 countries. Uh, the products which we are exporting, we are 
expanding over the years. Uh, I can mention that in last three years, our export is almost three times. So this has happened through two points. First of all, we are getting into more and more new countries. Uh, we are exploring like uh, the railway network of these countries with, uh, and finding out the network where it matches with our product compatibility. And then uh, we do the necessary modification in what or customization, whatever is required. As we have an in-house R&D setup, so we do that customization and fulfill that need. Apart from that, we are starting supplying more and more new products. So for example, if I talk about brakes, so till now we were supplying brakes for only freight wagons. Recently, we have started supplying brake systems for passenger coaches also for the export market. So that's how we are trying to bring the benefit of our low cost products to the global market and increasing our portfolio. And it is actually benefiting us in terms of because we have an in-house R&D facility. So we are able to customize our product as per the need of the customer. Thank you. I mean, actually what happens, I mean, since uh, uh, I do have the privilege to work in the government and the Indian private sector and then now an MNC, there's a lot of feeling that most of the Indian companies are low cost means low quality. It's not exactly anything you would like to say about the low cost versus low quality. Uh, I mean, any other comments you would like to talk to the panel or maybe if you have any questions also? So, uh, in terms of quality, I would like to say we are exporting our products to European countries. We are exporting to Malaysia, Australia, New Zealand. So, when we, uh, so New Zealand, we, are, we have recently supplied to Kiwi Rail. So, I'm saying when we are supplying to these type of countries, uh, we have to be sure that there is no compromise on quality and the kind of product portfolio we have. It is extremely safety critical. So quality, we have, we have to be rest assured. And, uh, and I agree with the Pankar as he has mentioned that there is a mentality when we are saying low cost that there is a compromise on quality. That is not the case. We have to ensure that we, because when you are exporting to a country, brake system, the quality comes first. So when you meet those standards, because those countries, those railway organizations are already purchasing these kind of components from some companies already. But we are replacing them or we are uh, getting into that space. So quality is first. First, when we meet those quality standards, those technical specifications, then only we are able to supply. So quality goes without saying, I would say. True. I mean, quality goes without saying and it's actually, it's not low cost is not quality. How efficiently and how uh, meticulously you meet the standards is what matters. So uh, maybe instead of a low cost, it should be best cost country sort of a solution. Okay, coming back, uh, I mean, uh, Rajiv, uh, I mean, we heard about the plans, what you had from Alstom, from making from India for make for global. Is there any, any particular regulatory frame, uh, or, I mean, issues you have? Is there anything which you feel that the, since we have people from the government, people from other things, uh, other uh, metro authorities also. Is there any p sort of a framework policy agreement which will you feel that the Alstom would be benefited from, uh, which we uh, from this platform can maybe raise a voice for? No, not really. I would say uh, there are not so many constraints to be honest. Uh, it's all about uh, you know setting, let us say, certain targets, uh, creating that talent base, uh, and that's what we have done uh, so far, and we are consciously. Uh, increasing that talent base. Uh, as you said, sourcing is key. Uh, so how do we develop that ecosystem of sourcing? Uh, what also has helped us is, uh, obviously, different country has their own standards. So when we have worked with different countries, be it Australia, be it, uh, you know, UK, uh, Belgium. So each country has their own standards. Uh, they have their own, let us say, RDSO. Uh, you know, you have SNCF and SNCBs. Uh, when we got that exposure, uh, we have only improved. And we found out that there are certain things which, you know, we probably were lacking. Uh, so we started working on that. Uh, so I would say from a constraint point of view, from a regulatory point of view, I think the answer is no. Uh, I mean, we do not see that. Uh, it was more internal that how we make that ambition uh, to do more and do it in a very collaborative way with uh, people in, uh, you know, let us say uh, outside India. And it is not always easy, you know, because when you are in different continent and you know you have to design a work for somebody you know for a train running in US or Mexico uh, I think it's never easy 
Uh, but I think there's, uh, you know, in fact, we created certain templates of how this communications, this coordination work can be done. So we start speaking the same language. We start understanding how this can be done. And I think this has been a regular practice yeah. for us. Uh, we have been quite successful in that. And because uh, we have been doing that quite successfully, I think the confidence has come even from the end customer because in this process, we are also exposed to the end customer. So it's not that we are just hiding uh, let us say behind and we are doing something more like an internal work. We are exposed uh, so that we understand, we graduate, we mature, we increase our competency and that's where I think uh, the growth has come. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Prithish, I mean, though, I mean, this may be an extempo question for you. See, you are taking up a lot of projects from uh, maybe the metros, now the Bande Bharat, also the Chinese, uh, whatever you are filling in the steps of this thing. One of the major criteria for these sort of handling multiple projects is that you need to have a people bandwidth. You have to have the people skills to handle so many multiple projects across the country. So, uh, I mean, what is your, I mean, how are you gearing up for that? So, I think it's a very interesting question and to answer this, we must first establish that intrinsically, Indians have the brains, we have the willingness and we have the ability to work hard. True. Which matters most of all. And, you know, with these qualities and with these fundamentals that we have as Indians, getting the people or training them to kind of meet these responsibilities and do these tasks is not the challenge. The challenge is finding people who are hungry and who have that basic uh, fundamental quality of wanting to do the work. And as India is growing, as, you know, I think Mr. Josiah, I think Mr. Garg, everybody would agree with me that in the last few years, we've seen a very um, visible, a very evident shift in the mindset of people. You know, what you were just discussing about best, best cost, but also best quality. That's a thought that is now getting entrenched in our minds. And not just in our minds, but the minds of the worker who's actually going to build the train. Very good. Let's be real. I mean, none of us sitting here are actually going to go build the train. It's, that's the True. job of the engineer or the GET. But this thought is now in their brains. So with this, uh, we really don't see a, a major challenge in getting people, training them, yes, but that, that just requires time and effort, which we are more than willing to put in. Yeah, very good actually. Yes, sir. Yeah, one quick word on low cost uh, leading to low reliability. I would like to add one thing to this, that low reliability, you hold money, yeah, low yeah. reliability is a function of technical discipline and I've seen it with my own eyes in some of these East Bloc countries with vintage machines of literally 1980s and 90s in Romania, in Hungary, in Ukraine, they could get uh, very high levels of accuracy and sophistication. So what uh, low cost doesn't necessarily lead to low reliability. What uh, low reliability uh, 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 can uh, get you uh, is because of uh, poor uh, uh, technical discipline. So that's, so I just wish to share this thought with you. Technical discipline is very important, not just uh, costs. So, I mean, if I understand you properly, that you are saying that the low cost, uh, the East European bloc, they had a lot of machinery and they were still producing good work. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah. But then there is one particular thing we are missing out here. They had low cost, uh, machinery, but they had a huge depth of experience. That's the question what Prithish yeah, was saying. Sure, sure, Unless I agree we with build that. that depth of experience out here, all our young people, people are ready to work, people are hungry to work. I like the word hungry to work. But unless you really build them up, unless you supplement that particular hunger with the so-called years of domain experience of deep expertise, uh, we will not be able to make a uh, real uh, difference. Sure. Because only yeah. hunger and only quest for knowledge and quest for this thing will not help. You will need to have the particular uh, domain expertise also to structure that knowledge uh, to particularly deliver the outcome because ultimately you have to deliver the project. You have to uh, score a goal, whatever you do in the field. Sure, and, so I that's agree the thing. Yeah. And then you have, you know, set of processes and validation because, true, you know, true. when you expose people, obviously you take control of the whole process in a way that, you know, you don't, you know, kind of create an outcome which is going to backfire, so... True. Mr. Gar, I mean, yeah, I'll please just add there. So, a, a very good example of this is the automobile sector in India. Yes. The way that automobile engineering has come up in the country is a prime example of how uh, expertise and skills can be built. True. 
you know, in the past, perhaps it's because the railway technology was a little behind or perhaps the focus on the railways was a little different to what it is today. Whatever the reason, point is that now people are focused on building railway specific uh, skills and knowledge. True. And we'll see the benefit of this in the yeah, future years. I mean, obviously we would. Mr. Garg, your 35 year maintenance plan. I mean, many people out here are from the MSMEs and many other smaller companies. How do you feel that your, uh, your 35 year maintenance plan would help this supplier ecosystem? The moment you talk about maintenance, we always talk about the technology. Unless the right technology is there on the, on the board, you will not be able to maintain the, the rolling stock the way it is, uh, it is being manufactured. What we are trying to do is that we are also trying to uh, thinking and planning to implement these systems which can, be, uh, which can be automated to check the health of the subsystems and the systems, mm -hmm. which can give us the right uh, attitude of the system which is working. And that will help us to know how the reliable and the sustainable product can be provided to the customer. So 35 years of maintenance can be dealt only with the help of the technology which is going to be maintained. If I'll give you a very simple example, there are many parts in which we are going to put the condition-based monitoring system as well, which is going to help us to know the actual health of the product, actual health of the subsystem, which will help us to know how the product and the, the system to be, to be maintained. So the idea is the moment the technology would be maintained, which is slightly to be automated, a less human intervention would be there, then the maintenance can be worked out very easily and very good. Yeah, good. Anyone from the uh, audience, because we have uh, barely five minutes left. Yes, please. Good evening, sir. I am Rajiv Sharma. I am former additional member of Signal Railway Board. Uh, presently, I am supporting Surat Metro through a GEC. So I, would, uh, I had a small question uh, for Mr. Pitish. Uh, for Surat Metro, as you know, we are having a requirement for uh, Goa 4, that's a driverless trains, and also with the front evacuation, keeping in view the third train traction and all. So I'm not sure whether we have the expertise for designing uh, such a rolling stock within the country. So probably you will need to have some uh, expertise uh, from the foreign collaborators and all. So something of that, of that kind you could throw light, light upon, please. Thank you. So, so uh, you're, you're right on saying that today internally if I was asked to develop a GOA4 uh, propulsion system, perhaps we do not have the capability to. That is why what we've done is we've tied up with ABB, which is a global leader in the field of propulsion. Uh, to kind of supply the uh, propulsion systems for the Surat and the Ahmedabad Metro, which is a Goa 4 system as you mentioned, sir. And what we've done is we've also signed a complete transfer of technology with them, wherein the source code and the IPR for the TCMS of the Goa 4 system, which is effectively the brain of the train, will belong to Titagad. Along with that, uh, we are now building our own engineering team. So in the next few years, we hope to have a very, uh, we already have a pretty robust team in Calcutta, in Hyderabad and in Italy. Uh, we've opened a center in Bangalore now where we'll be expanding our team even further. And going forward, two, three years down the line, we expect to have our own team trained to the point where we can design or we can edit or we can alter a propulsion system on our own without having to seek uh, any external help. I hope that answers your question. I just wanted to add one thing, that where the CVTC will be from the, from basically Elstrom. So both of you are all together over here, so you need to collaborate for this thing, right? I think we, on multiple projects, our teams are already working together, so that's already happening, sir. In fact, in Pune, Pune line too, uh, we are collaborating, so I mean, it's, it's the nature of our job, you know. Hello. I am Vishnu Nambudri. I am running an MSME making automobile parts and rubber parts for railways. So I have made certain items, you know, which is first time in India. But I do not know whom I have to contact and uh, display my product to the, to the actual uh, users. How can I contact the people? I don't have any idea. I have designed uh, certain items which is first time in India, rubber product. Maybe you should meet all of them separately for a coffee out there 
and discuss about how to… I think, you know, how, many of the people over here… So, these they are the are, leaders, their supply chain know, people would be that. able to answer that question, like, I suppose. You know, like me, you know, there are many people for over here. Minutes. Because for this exhibition, most of the people are come only for, you know, finding out a good market. I feel so. Yeah. I am Paresh Kakadia from Matrix Alim. My question is Prithesh sir. As a car body manufacturer, it is possible to outsource uh, welded alum aluminum body? It is definitely possible, but that is where our expertise lies. So outsourcing that may not be the best call for us uh, at this point in time. Sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, Madam, do we take that as the last question? One more question. Yeah, yeah. Any Let's take that last as the last question. question. Okay, you have two. Yeah. Good afternoon, good evening everyone. My name is Ashish Shabtel. I was fortunate enough to work with some of the gentlemen sitting on the dais and also fortunate to be a part of the 2018 Vande Bharat story. Now, one, two curious things. Uh, we are very excited to know about the sleeper trains which are, you know, in the maybe designing stage on the rendering stage. And uh, where do you see the entire story of this Vande Bharat in the next 10 years, I mean, if the voice is clear? I mean, as a brand, we'll be in a position to export this Vande Bharat are we reaching to that quality level? I didn't get you properly because there is a lot of noise. Yeah, I think… Uh, Maybe, sir, you can come to the front and ask yeah, the question. Yeah, we, we can't hear you from there. Yeah, sorry. I but just wanted to if know… You hear the, if you put the mic near your mouth, it will be no, better. There's a blower blowing… In yeah, the, absolutely. Yeah. So, I'm just curious to know what uh, you see the Vande Bharat as a brand in the next 10 years down the line. And uh, we are very curious to know the sleeper trains which are going to come in the next maybe one or two years. Uh, because I was a part of this entire story from 2018 onwards. So it's very exciting. I've travelled Vande Bharat a lot. I think that will be the game changer from aircraft to the trains. So very keen to know on that. So I would say the Vande Bharat is a future for India. The way we are working, uh, the way uh, the, the SSRs and the predecessors have developed this product and the way it is going to change from chair car to the sleeper class, you can see the, the change in the rolling stock industry by itself. Right now, we have been working on the dif different rolling stock projects, which is, let's say, the RRTS, the metros and all. But now, the way we are changing from chair car to the metro car, you will see the difference by yourself. And to be honest, these projects are something in which we are, uh, we ourselves are, are using these trains. Our families are using these trains. So the moment you, you are associated with such projects, you give your full passion to develop something which is, which is going to be used for the customer. And as uh, Sir said, uh, we are going to take care of all those pain areas the way it has been in the in the current uh, maybe the trains the way we used to face we'll try to address all those issues and i'm sure that this vande bharat train is going to be the future for india thank for you sure. the vande bharat will become the future platform if i may say hopefully the way the government is pushing for it lhb had been too old so nothing much to upgrade from a loco hauled uh, regional trains uh, to more of a uh, train set concept, that's the what the government is pro uh, proliferating. Hopefully, with the now the new railway board order, where you have 22 coaches being added to a Bande Bharat uh, uh, train, uh, you will see a lot of difference, a lot of comfort, a lot of passenger experience uh, would improve drastically, if I may say, in the coming forward. Particularly, where you have the, uh, the Indian railway built Bande Bharat on one side with a chair car for the ICF, MCF, and the RCF while you have the privately built Bande Bharat, you will see a stark difference because a lot of, uh, lot of innovation, a lot of technology will obviously go in from their, oh, 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 I mean, the age-old, whatever expertise they have as a global companies. But I must add to Thank that you. and to what Mr. Gulf yes. said. Sorry, yeah, no problem, quick. sir, no problem. So, I must also compliment the Indian Railways here because yes. whatever pain points that they have seen or rather that the passengers have reported to them, whether that's in the old loco hall trains, whether that's in the chair car, those suggestions are being shared with us and yes. we are being told to address those pain points. So it's not just an effort by the industry or by the manufacturers, it is a collaborative effort between the railways and us so True. that we can really give the best possible experience to the end user. True. I mean, many of you who feel the government does not uh, listen, it's not true. That's the feedback which the government is giving back to the private industry. 
so thank you and uh, thank we are you, up for the thank you for the time thank so you thank so you much sir. i knew if you're going to be the moderator it's going to be bang on time uh, can i request sri vet prakash deja ji to please join us on stage to uh, extend and present the mementos to our panelists and the moderator but i think now we're almost on to 5:15 they deserve a bigger hand come on everybody let's put our hands together for our panelists and the moderator Can we have the mementos on stage, please? To begin with, we'd like to thank Mr. Rajiv Joy, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us here. Come on, everyone. Mr. Pratish Chaudhary, Sri Mangal Dev, Mr. Manav Gulati, and Mr. Ankur Dev. I think we can just get to save time. We can just get all the mementos together. Just get. for the next presentation which is going to be by our silver partners 3m i would request uh, mr vishal keria to please uh, be ready yes but can we get the mementos please thank you sir thank you everybody Thank you so much everyone. Thank you. Uh can I request all of you to come together for a group picture with the mementos maybe? Uh ahead of the tables. Ahead of the tables please. Thank you. Thank you everyone for such a great insightful panel discussion and we definitely look forward to having you once again with us